In this Salt and Sacrifice Top 3 Builds Guide, we're going to share with you our favorite three builds when it comes to mage hunting in the spiritual successor to Salt and Sanctuary. Each build includes stats, equipment, skills, weapons, armor, and runic arts recommendations. If you're new to Salt and Sacrifice, or you just need a bit of guidance on how to make a strong character, watch on to find out more. Big shout out to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. If you're picking up the game in the Epic Games Store, be sure to use our link below to help support the channel. Starting off, we have the Juggernaut build. The Juggernaut build is a very simple but effective build that is best suited for newcomers to Souls games or for players that struggle with rolling mechanics. This build focuses on increasing HP and resistance to be able to tank through a lot of hits while using a heavy hitting weapon to deal a lot of damage with each blow in response. For the Juggernaut build, we'll be using the Mangle Blade two-handed weapon which allows you to conjure two different swarms that follow your enemies, dealing periodic damage while you hack away with it. All damage done by either swarm will build up rage, making them self-sustaining abilities. These runic arts are Circling Swarm This runic art creates two swarms that circle around your character, dealing damage to any enemy they touch. Since you'll be fighting up close, you'll be able to increase your damage up to three times. Hunting Swarm This runic art creates a swarm that follows the closest enemy and deals periodic damage. The swarm moves very slowly, so it's best used when close to an enemy in order to get the most out of it and not miss out on a lot of damage if the enemy moves out of range. As you level up your Juggernaut, you'll need to maintain a balance between two-handers, heavy armor, and throwing axes. You'll also need to unlock the Class 3 Glyph Reader to be able to use Runic Arts. Your stats for the Juggernaut build should look something like this around level 90. When it comes to equipment for this build, you'll obviously want the Mangle Blade, as I already mentioned, but you'll also want the following items to help round out the build. For the ranged weapon, the Flesh Hunter scales with Strength and deals Frost Damage, pairing perfectly with this build. For your armor set, the Hollowed set, which can be farmed from Rust Knights at Hollowed Hill, is the best option, but you can opt for any heavy armor according to the mage you're currently fighting. When it comes to amulet, the draped amulet hastens stamina regeneration, allowing you to quickly re-engage with enemies without having to worry about stamina. When it comes to your dagger, you can enhance your weapon's frost damage by equipping the Cryomancer's pick. When it comes to rings, the first one that you'll want is the Molten Ring, which will give you a significant boost to your health. The second ring should be the Leather Ring, which boosts your melee and ranged attack power. When it comes to artifacts, all artifacts work with this build, but you'll want to focus on ones that have raw health and damage. The next build we'll be discussing is the Time Reaper. This build takes advantage of the Time Column Runic Art to quickly annihilate mages, in many cases even before they have a chance to escape. The Time Column Runic Art is present in both the Temporal Reaper Scythe and the Temporal Twin Sickle, but for this build we'll pick the Scythe, as it also comes equipped with Phantom Volley. The idea with this build is to run close to the mage and cast Time Column, followed by Time Blades and Phantom Volley. While under the effect of Time Column, the mage will move incredibly slowly, but take full damage from all of your attacks, allowing you to lower its health by a great portion or even defeating it before it has a chance to escape to the next location. The Runic Arts for this build are as follows. Time Column. For a short period of time after casting, it creates a small column that slows down time for enemies and projectiles within. Mages move very slowly and won't be able to retreat, allowing you to land all of your hits and spells. The Time Column can also be used to cover yourself from projectiles while you consume flasks. Time Blades This runic art summons spinning phantom blades that attack enemies from behind, dealing solid damage while you also attack from the front. This helps boost your damage significantly and allows you to trap mages between a rock and a hard place with your constant attacks. Phantom Volley Conjures a volley of arrows that deal damage in a wide area. The arrows deal individual damage, so you should cast it in proximity to a mage, so as to hit them with the highest number of arrows possible. This should be much easier to do when they are slowed with Time Column. For this build, you'll need to unlock Class 5 Reaper for your weapon and Class 5 Glyph Reader to unlock your Runic Guards. You should focus on Reapers first and then assign points into Divine Glyphs as required depending on the Reaper that you are currently using. I personally like to use Heavy Armor with this build, as you'll need to be directly underneath the enemy to effectively use most of these Runic Arts. Your stat should look something like this around level 90. When it comes to equipment for this build, you can use either the Temporal Reaper Scythe or the Temporal Twin Sickle, but as I mentioned, I prefer the Scythe due to the Phantom Volley ability. When it comes to your ranged weapon, the Flesh Hunter deals a lot of damage and scales with both Strength and Conviction, making it a perfect match for this build. Any heavy armor set will do for this build, as you want high protection while you cast these abilities right beneath the enemy. When it comes to your amulet, you'll want to pick the Divine Amulet, which increases your Runic Art damage. When it comes to your dagger, the Pyromancer's Chris increases your elemental fire attacks, increasing your runic art damage as well as your physical damage. As far as your rings go, the Mindstone Ring increases your maximum focus, allowing you to cast more runic arts in one go, which is why I recommend it. 
For your second ring, you'll want the Luminous Ring, which increases the effect of Haze Decoction. I highly recommend that you drink a potion before the fight, so you're restoring focus as soon as you cast your first runic art. When it comes to artifacts, you'll want to find a utility artifact that increases your runic art damage. And last, we come to the Diviner. This build is designed around the Stave of Scrolls, which can be crafted by hunting Biblomancers and gathering their materials. The Stave of Scrolls comes equipped with three runic arts that deal an incredible amount of light damage, even from a great distance. These runic arts are as follows. Glyph Barrage. This runic art fires a horizontal barrage in the shape of a column that deals very high damage. It's best used in narrow corridors or to deal with multiple enemies, as it can hit everything in a straight line, making it deadly under the right conditions. Glyph Vortex. This runic art creates a circular-shaped bubble surrounded by runes on top of the player. After a short period of time, the runes will be quickly released, homing towards the closest enemy, similar to Glintblade Phalanx in Elden Ring. Enemies will also take damage from the runes if they touch them before they are released. This allows you to use it while standing below a mage to inflict instant damage and stagger. Glyph Rain. When cast, it will search for the closest enemy and create a shower of runes on top of it. This skill deals less total damage than Glyph Vortex, but can be used from a distance, allowing you to attack enemies that are on higher or lower levels from safety. Learn how and when to use this for best results. For this build, you'll need to unlock Class 5 Stave to use your weapon and Class 5 Bane Reader to unlock its runic arts. You should focus on staves first and then assign points into Forbidden Glyphs as needed, depending on the staff that you are currently using. I highly recommend that you use Light Armor for this build, as you'll need to roll and run for safety in order to drink potions, which are essential to spam your spells. If you use Medium or Heavy Armor, you won't move as quickly, making this take more time, often putting you in a bad position. However, you can use what you like. Your stats should look something like this at level 90. When it comes to equipment, you'll be using the Stave of Scrolls, as I already mentioned, but there are a lot of other items that are helpful as well. For your ranged weapon, the best option will be the Codex Rod, which can also be obtained from Biblomancers. This rod scales with Arcana, and your equipment will further increase its damage. The armor set that you use is completely up to you and might depend on the mage that you're currently running. The Diabolical set or Riddleworm set are both great options in my opinion, but you can use whatever you like. When it comes to your amulet, you're going to use the Divine Amulet, which increases your Runic Art damage, greatly increasing your total damage output since we rely on them so heavily. For your dagger, you'll want the Edge of Haradustus, which increases your Elemental Light attacks, increasing your Runic Art's damage, as well as your physical and range damage. When it comes to rings, this build requires that you constantly spam spells that consume focus. The Luminous Ring increases the effect of your Haze Decoction, allowing you to cast more spells with each consumption. For your second ring, you have two options. First is the Ever Parched Ring, which increases flask speed, allowing you to heal or recover focus much faster. This can often prevent you from getting hit, and is great for situations where you don't always have room for optimal spacing. An alternative is the Mindstone Ring, which increases your total focus, allowing you to cast more consecutive spells. Regardless of which you choose though, the concept is the same. More focus equals wit. When it comes to artifacts, you can use whatever you want, but try to find a utility artifact that provides runic art damage and range damage. That wraps up our guide to Salt and Sacrifice's top three builds, and I hope you gained some insight into how you might build your character for maximum performance. Salt and Sacrifice has a ton of build variety, and sometimes trying out different runic arts yields many unexpected results, not unlike Elden Ring. Again, if you're picking up the game on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use our link below to help support the channel. So what build are you guys using in Salt and Sacrifice? Have you experimented with the different runic arts? Let us know in the comments below.